morning, everybody, and welcome to the Art as Well. This is your source of inspiration, enlightenment, and connection with artists throughout Ireland and the world. And indeed, non-artists also, people connected with the arts. And I say that this morning because my guest is not an artist, but he's deeply involved in the arts and has been for many, many years. He is well known to probably thousands of artists throughout the world. And he is, of course, the director of the RHA, Patrick T. Murphy. Now, Patrick um, is, is uh, as you know, they're, they're celebrating their 200th uh, anniversary, 200th year anniversary this year. Um, and it is also their 193rd um, annual exhibition. And you might wonder, where do the other seven go? And it mightn't be as you think. So um, I know he's going to answer that question. And I have a few other questions I've put to him surrounding, you know, the history of the RHA, uh, how it works and so on, what its objectives are, um, also how they choose work for the prestigious annual event. Um, and I also ask him, uh, maybe controversially, what he would say to people who were rejected um, and many, many people are. <laughs> I can see some hands coming up and I can put my own up as well. So, you know, been there, done that. Um, but I think you'll find it very interesting. I also delve into a little bit of his personal life in terms of his interests um, and also uh, what is what is sort of his wish list is for the future. The interview took place last Thursday in the gallery. Um, and because he's not available, he's, he's gone away in a well-deserved uh, break um, from work. So he's not around this morning. Um, but ha having said that, uh, I would also like to mention, but give a special mention for Rebecca Gale, who was um, very instrumental in putting us together uh, and making this interview happen. And I think it's extremely timely given the bicentenary and, and also the current exhibition. I'm here with Patrick Murphy and Patrick is director of the RHA. Um, how long have you been in the position, Patrick? Gosh, for uh, 26 years. Really? Yes, yeah, yeah. Gosh, this is my, it's my fourth job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what were the others? Um, the other three. The first job was was my lucky break. It was back in nineteen ninety seven. Um we myself and my then girlfriend were acting as waiters uh, to a, a private dinner party in um out in Monkstown, I think, and uh, someone said to me, Oh, did you see that job up in the Arts Council? And I said, No, I haven't seen the job in the Arts Council. So Next day, I looked it up, and that that day you could you couldn't go to your web. You had to do something with the um, the newspaper or whatever. Mm. And I applied for the arts. Write a real letter. And write a real letter. I applied for the arts council, and to my delight, I got it in the, in the autumn of seventy nine. Started in January of of nineteen eighty, and uh, and um, it was it was extraordinary because I kind of knew that I didn't know enough. And I and it sort of you know that's always been my position is that I have to learn more about art. I have to learn more about art, and you know, and it was a great it was a great um, baptism. Mm -hmm. uh, the director then was a man called Colin O'Brien, who was a terrific director. Young, the art council was young. There was twelve of us. Yeah, I think the annual budget was four million a year. That's for everything, and the Abbey took two. Um, you know, and that's not changed much. You know, um, and. Um, it was just a just a, a, a terrific sense of building, mm. of of building the arts in Ireland, and I, I think that still goes on. We're still building the arts. We're still building a culture, mm. and um, so that was a that was say four and a half years, and then I went to uh, Trinity College to the Douglas High Gallery for another four and a half years, and then again, like, like sort of like out of the blue. A friend in, in the states around and said, "There's a terrific job coming up. You should apply for it." In Philadelphia, is it? In Philly, yeah, yeah. In the Institute of Contemporary Art, in Philadelphia, mm. and uh, I duly applied for it, and um, and I got an interview, and that was sort of I, that was on my expense, but then I got a second interview on their expense, and then I got offered the job, wow. and um, it was kind of um, it was a real crossroads or a fork in the road for me because, in ways. I didn't particularly want to go abroad, <laughs> mm. um, but there was there was but Dublin in eighty nine was a it was a, culturally a very flat place. Emma hadn't opened, um, the the um, 
Hugh Lane was quite moribund. Um, and, and there just wasn't an excitement. And I knew if I was going to improve my prof professionally, I, I'd have to go. So so I went and uh, I spent 10 glorious years in America. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fantastic. And then you came back to Ireland. But why did you come back to Ireland? Well, <coughs> at that stage, in the um, the secretary of the academy then was a man called Connor Fallon. And myself and Connor were good friends. We used to fish together. And um, Connor sort of contacted me and said, Would you come back? And uh, um, and I can't, like the, the, the life in, in America is, is sort of peripatetic. You would end up. Um, Moving cities, and so I would move from Philadelphia. That was that was very comfortable yeah. as a city. You know, you'd go to you'd have to go to Chicago or yes, you know, or somewhere in the Midwest or, or the the coast and uh, the West Coast. And it was like you could never get to New York, you know. But so it was just like I didn't really want that type of lifestyle where I'd be moving every five to six years, moving cities yeah. in the states. Yes, um, so the idea of coming back here. And then really taking on a challenge because the. Um, and was this the reason why you came back? Yes. There wasn't yeah. a job before. No, no. I okay. came back to the academy. Straight, yeah. Yeah. As I said, I, I slipped out of a Porsche in Philadelphia and got a sack full of bicycle parts. <laughs> so it was a matter of having come back so far. Yeah. I, I, the first two years were skittish. I mean, mm. like, I think the first years I did interview for a job in the States. And, uh, and it was like, because it was so. It was. It, it was so, so starting over again, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I got stuck in, and um, you know, um, and the academy was changing anyway, and mm -hmm. um, and now has sort of completely changed, you know. Right. But it was like a matter of you know, um, we also saw then the, the Celtic Tiger begin to peck up, you know, and it's it's snout, and the you know one of the things that one learns in in America is how to build a sort of philanthropic atmosphere around your space mm -hmm. and so that was and that takes time that's that's not you know i think there's a <coughs> there's sort of a naive idea that you know fundraising is something you ask for when you need the money fundraising is the last thing you want to do is fundraise when you when you need the when money you need it, yes. yeah you yes. have to have take yeah. to take your time so mm -hmm. we were able to build a, a good um, atmosphere around the academy and then in 2009 we were able to put in nine and a half million to make it what it is today, as a phys physically, mm. um, and that was fabulous. But it kind of happened as, as the crash happened. Yes. So we, we sort of had the Porsche, but we couldn't afford the petrol. Yeah. So we had to wait. The next day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we had to wait until it till it till it grew again. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, it was like that sort of thing where I was very my my intention. Was to to make the academy relevant to to an art any artist, whether you're eighteen or or eighty eight, yeah. And 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 then really it was building programs around the with around the annual because the annual was always the the sort of the island exhibition that was happening every year, mm. you know. Yes. And and that had its own magnetism. It brought in its own people, and you know, and now it brings in many different types of people. Back then it was still a very much an academic mm. exhibition. Um, <coughs> by, by strategies like our futures exhibitions, and um, and then say programming other younger artists into into, into the shows here, uh, and building building the academy out into parts of before it didn't reach. I think we were really able to to move this institution into a fairly central, you know, a part of an artist's um, trajectory. Mm. You know, you know, as an emerging artist or as a Yes, established or as a senior artist. Yeah. yeah. Tell, tell me, as an institution, does it vary a lot, or does it uh, compare um, to a similar organisation in the states? No. No. What's the difference? I think the difference is well, you know, in America there would have been thirty six people on my board, mm -hmm. and we were part of a university. Um, we would have been very driven by um, by planning and um, you know uh, various. Um, Timelines and achieving certain things very much more more business like if you want or more mm. like a business because yeah. the university was very much like a business, um, and here you know you've got a, a well at that stage say there was maybe forty artists in the academy, mm. you you've basically a parliament of forty artists, mm. so so you know at, at which don't coalesce into into mm. predictable party politics, as it were. Yes. They constantly maturely change their alliances mm. and things like this. So 
it was it was a much more um, in ways more complex to, to run because it was less less it, it, it dealt less on rationality mm-hmm. um, yeah it was it was it, it was an extraordinary I, I really had to adapt to the way to the, the way of the academy okay. and and they were also quite good with adapting to me I mean I think Connor Fallon my friend was very suspicious that that the executive would take over the academy Mm. Yes, that in some way we would, we would, we would shove the artist to the edge of its of its function. Mm. Yeah, um, and so I was very conscious that 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 I needed to keep the academy within the academy, and mm. it kept keep the academy for the academy. Yes, you know? and, um, and 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 so sort of that formally in things like the executive of the academy is the RHA council, which are ten members of the academy. Um, I would sit on the council. With the so, council. are you the only non-artist? Uh, yes, I, I, at that level. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we have a staff of ten. Of course, now. yes, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, um, they did make me an honorary member, which I oh. always thank them for. <laughs> uh, but the, um, but yeah, so the the, 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 the that was the table of the council of of all artists and myself, and then oh. and I attend that, and that work, work, works like a board, mm-hmm. you know, for all the work reporting and. And, and looking at different issues and things, and then we have the assembly of the academy when everyone gets together. Mm. And I w- I don't sit at, at the assembly. I attend the assembly, and I um, give give clarifications when they're asked for. Yeah. So very 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 sensitive of that 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 this organisation, the assembly, is the one that makes the decisions for for the gen- for the bigger picture of, of the academy. Yeah. yeah. So in a sense, it's like a club, isn't it? In, in, in a sense, it's, 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 it's become less like a club. It is it is limited. I mean, one of the things that we're doing in our bicentennial year this year, and this this is a process that started back in, oh, pre-COVID. Um, because we're a royal chartered body, we have to, it's an act of the doll that changes our constitution. Mm-hmm. So we have a private bill with the doll at the moment. The committee's been appointed to it. Which means that I think it'll be heard sometime this year, um, and that's basically to to update the charter for the twenty first century. Mm. So instead of having thirty full members and ten associates, we're going to have fifty five full members and ten associates. Um, where the the charter prescribes that no meeting can happen more than ten miles from the city centre, horse right away. So basically, we're getting rid of that. The charter says that we can't receive a gift of more than a thousand guineas. You know, which we've really broken that one. Get and, the same yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, so it's it's updating the charter to to an act of the door. And and the other thing I was very conscious at the beginning was, you know, it, it was you mentioned a club. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have worried so much about the clubbiness. It was the it was, it was so insular. Mm. You know, I mean, it wasn't getting oxygenated by by people from other areas of the academy yes. or other areas of society. Mm-hmm. So we at that stage set up three boards. So we have three boards um, attached to the academy that are made up with artists and civilians, if you oh, want to really? right? okay. So we have a, a program board that looks after the exhibitions, education, the f- marketing and, um, and fundraising mm-hmm. for, for the program. And then we have a schools board that looks after the, the, the schools program, which is now accredited, and the um, studio program. And then we had a, a, we had a patrons board that you know was 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 charged with you know raising the money for this for the renovation back in two thousand and nine, yes. And that board's defunct now, but it's still on paper. In that, if we ever wanted to bring it back again, we can. If we have another project to do, and we should have other projects to do, you know, in the coming decades. But um, but that was very important for me to begin to get like accountants, lawyers, you know, business people in. In and, in and around the academy and the decision making at the academy, yes, so yes. they are they are relieved, relieved from any sort of corporate responsibility in that they're only advisory boards, mm. but we treat them like like boards. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, that, that, that's very good. Yeah, has the whole area of education academics become more important to the organisation? Well, I, you know, it, when we when we rebuilt in two thousand and nine. Uh, we, we were sort of delayed rebuilding mm-hmm. because we were about to leave the um, leave the harbour in about 2004. Um, 
And um, literally in a kind of sign-off meeting, someone piped up and said, but why don't we add a school and studios? And and everyone got excited about adding the school and studios, which meant that back to the drawing board, literally. Yeah. And um, so we, we added a school and studios, you know, rebudgeted the whole thing out, started off again. And and the studios and schools ha- have been remarkable. I mean, Mick O'Dea was the first artist to, to sort of preside over the studio and schools mm. and uh, ran a fairly... Uh, you know, intensive program. Um, and then Joe Dunn took over from him, and again for a number of years. But it wasn't really until Colin Martin came on, who 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 was an educator, who had worked in NCT, and and he took over, that he, that he we really put shape mm. and uh, an intent within the school yeah. program. Um, and that now is, is accredited up to 60 credits. I don't understand the technicalities of this, sure, yeah. but it's up to 60 credits, yes. which means the equivalent of a first year in an art college. So if you do it here, mm. you can move on to second year. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. going to ask you about that. Yeah, What's yeah. the difference between, say, NCAD and yourselves? Yeah, well, and the big thing <coughs> is, the, is that the emphasis on drawing and painting, that you could do a year here where you, you know, it, the skill is on observational drawing and, <coughs> and painting, and it's being taught by, not being taught by professional educators, but being taught by working artists. So we have a great range of um, of of tutors like Sean Malloy or Kira Roach or Satoko Blake that come in and, and run, run the different the different modules. Yeah. So it's it's really you know it's really a good skill based year, mm-hmm. and the studios have become of course so much more important. We have four in house um, that are available through open access applications. Um, we have three studios now with iPod. Um, which is up on, up on Lad, Lad, Lad Lane. Mm-hmm. Um, we yes. have the, a residential studio in Callum, which is Tony O'Malley, which is Tony O'Malley's house. Yeah. Uh, we have a two month residency on Clare Island. Oh, really? And we have a yeah. one month residency on in a shear, you know. Mm-hmm. But the, the whole thing really now is to, um, we, as the city gets shrunk, you know, for cheap real estate and for places that artists can use the studios. Um, our emphasis is trying to work with, with, with more of the developers to try to to get studio spaces in, in places. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Do you find that business is more amenable to this sort of investment? Or? It, it's interesting. What's yeah. ha- what else I've noticed in the last year, the planners mm-hmm. are insisting on cultural footage within any new development. Ah, are they? Yeah. Yes. And okay. what I'm seeing too is that the blue chip developers are sort of taking that seriously. Mm-hmm. And the more speculative developers are saying yes to doing nothing. So oh, you know, right. yeah, yeah. So so there's a number. So yeah, I would. I, was, so I thought it would be one of the biggest. Well, yeah, they'd be one of the blue chips or yeah. you know, good bodies real estate or things. There's a number of that that, that, that really want to. Or about know, Kennedy Wilson? Or they? Yeah, I haven't been on to them yet. Right. You know, I haven't. I haven't come across them yet. I mean, you know, are they pulling out? I have no idea. Yeah, I don't either. I have no idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I really have no idea, but it's like, uh, but I know from the point of view of the city, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it is a crisis, uh, there's a housing crisis in the city for a start, mm-hmm. but then, you know, which means makes living here, renting here very expensive, but then to try to find studio space on top of that, it's it's kind of not impossible these days. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can imagine. It really is. Yeah. Um, so this year is your 193rd annual, annual exhibition, which is phenomenal. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Wait, sorry, why is there a gap of seven years? Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, that I, I do have the years to, to my fingertips. At one stage, <laughs> I did. Um, so, so the first annual exhibition didn't happen. The Academy was founded in 1823, hmm. and the first annual exhibition didn't happen until 1826. So there's yes. three years there. And then there was one or two in the <clears> 1870s, 1880s. And then the, the next time it really happened was in the, in the 1970s. That the that, that the annual exhibition. Oh, was I, I thought it was just you know when when they were founded. Yeah, it took no, them seven years. No, before no, they decided, no, no. It's a, I, an I, I, I think you know, the the academy has gone through you know it is literally you know gone through good times and bad times. Uh, and, like uh, any organization. Yeah, and like the seventies, it was pretty. Um, I think it was the the, the membership was very low. Mm-hmm. Um, I I think there was there was difficulties in negotiating the national gallery. That's where they used to have it. Um. And I don't think the National Gallery were 
I wanted them to get too comfortable in there every year, having, having their annual. But um, it does, so it didn't happen. I used to romantically think it didn't happen during the famine. It happened all the time during the famine. But I didn't miss, it, didn't miss a year in the famine. Yeah. Do, they, do they ever use the um, uh, the city assembly hall for exhibitions? No, but but that would have been. But, but that was the first. first yeah, and, and, and the nucleus of the academy back in whatever the seventeen eighties yeah. built that mm. as a gallery, and yeah. and then. But then our next building was when we were founded in 1823. Uh, the the landscape painter William Ashton was our first first president, but he passed away within a year. Yeah. And then Francis Johnson was our second president, mm -hmm. and Francis Johnson designed and built and gifted to the academy our premises on Lower Abbey Street, which is beside Wynn's Hotel that was burnt oh. down in 1916. Really? So it was it was a huge. I mean, a huge whatever. Mm. Uh, Act of generosity, you know, to, yes. to, to do to build the academies, academy house, as it was yeah. called. Yeah. <coughs> and um, so we were in that till 1916. And I, and I think there was the whatever, and you know, it's very interesting if you look back at the minute books, books of, sorry, no, no, no. 1923, mm. there's no real talk of a, of a centennial sorry. celebration. <laughs> <Yeah. That's laughs> well, I think we've just got we've just got the keys to the castle, <laughs> yeah, literally. And uh, uh, as a state, and I think that it was just like it was time not not to say a word. I know, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. absolutely. Um, and then in twenty three, the first woman was elected to the academy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, nineteen twenty three. Yes. So we're doing an exhibition now with the with the National Gallery called "It Took a Century" because mm -hmm. it took a century to elect the first woman, and it took a century, nearly a century, to elect the first female president, our current president, yes. Angela Bryan. Yeah. Um, and it's really interesting the with the when you the the, ex, the exhibition looks at there's been twenty six posthumous members who are women mm -hmm. of the academy between nineteen twenty three and now yeah. and are, there are currently twenty four current members of the academy which are which are female members mm -hmm. so we're like kind of parity now in that yes and and that that decision because it, because what's the total membership well the total membership is. Uh, if if the bill goes through, yeah. <laughs> we're below what we should have, but we yes. are we we pushed beyond this at the moment, right? So we've been a little bit delinquent on that one, uh, as indeed we were delinquent in February when we held our first meeting outside Dublin in two hundred years mm. in Sligo, without the bill sure. going through. But yeah. that was going to arrest us. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have to get on with these things. So there's only a core on the other hand. So there's uh, there's I think there's twenty six um, main members in twenty, so we're around fifty. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So it's good. I mean, I, I, you know, it's it's kind of late in the like in twenty twenty three talking about gender parity. You know, what I mean, like I know, you're yeah. actually talking about so much more type of diversity at the moment. Yes, you know? yes. Um, but I, I think that again, the academy, that end of the academy, sort of moves at a slower pace than the front end of the academy. In that, uh, like you, members literally do have to pass away. Before a new member can be elected of the thing, so I believe, yeah, yeah. So that that slows it down. So is the A R H A? Is that is that somebody who was sort of on hold? Yeah, that's so. So one of the good things they did there, there was time, and this is very recent. Like this, mm. I'd say is is maybe two thousand and fifteen. They decided that the A R H A S would be elected into the membership in chronological order as they joined. Before that, there were people who died at ARHAs, and other people came in as ARHAs and went around them and up into the body yeah. of the academy. So, so now at least it's logical. Mm -hmm. you know, you're elected, and then as places turn up, you go up the ladder and you're yeah. filled in underneath. And, yes. and it, it, it's a fascinating membership now because it's so, it really is so diverse, you know, mm -hmm. from someone you know, as, as wonderfully academic as, as Kerry Clark, you know. To, to Neve O'Malley, who represented us last year in Venice, you know, so it's yes. it's a it's a really good good body of people now. It's it's like it's it, it's changed cons hugely, and I can never. Change. I was going to ask you if somebody yeah. came back from the eighteen hundreds and saw what's yeah. going on now. Well, it's, what really, they think? it's kind of interesting to think about that one because uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the eighteen hundreds, I mean, they were showing their contemporary art. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, yes. um, I don't know what they think um, um, of 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 it all. We another aspect. So that exhibition that took a century is on with the National Gallery at the end of June, okay. and um, so, and I think it's sort of it's a self-critical exhibition. Mm -hmm. You know, we're really criticising ourselves for being so so late in, into the game mm -hmm. of giving giving gender parity. And I think it wasn't until the eighteen nineties Walter Osborne, through his his 
his efforts we, that women were allowed into the into the life drawing classes to actually draw. Really? Yeah, yeah. they were allowed in as models, but they weren't allowed to draw. Yes. And Walter Osborne a, achieved that in, in, in the 1890s. Yeah. So we, a number of years ago, but three, four years ago, John Turpin completed a, a history of the academy, which mm -hmm. is in two volumes and, and it's fully indexed and it's yeah. very erudite. But one thing I really wanted to um, to do in this year was to create something that would be a little bit more user friendly. Yes. So we commissioned commissioned Christine Leach mm -hmm. to to do a book. It was featured on the well, by the way. Oh, yep. There yeah. you go. She's on yeah. the well. Yeah. yeah. So you know Christine well. Yes. Um, and uh, so she's done a beautiful book called um, it's called From Ten to Dusk. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ten to Dusk was the ad in the. In whatever the Freeman's Journal or whatever here in the city in, in 1826, and it's how long we were open with the annual exhibition from 10 o'clock in the morning until dusk, okay, until so the light went basically. Yes, and yeah. um, it's called A Portrait of the Tent of Dusk, A Portrait of the Artists, A Portrait of the Royal Academy in 12 Stories. Yeah, and it is really, they are really stories. And oh, when has that been launched? We hope to launch that now in October. Okay. So and I gather there's a stamp being launched too. Oh, we have a stamp. Uh, yeah. yeah, the stamp is out. So we have two stamps. We have stamp, one stamp reflects the, the school upstairs and the easels that people draw from the model. And then the other stamp reflects the, the galleries and that other function. So our, our dual functions are, are represented. Yes. And we also have, a, in the autumn, <coughs> a blue plaque going up on what's now the spar in the Abbey Street. To where the building was for oh, the first excellent. whatever yeah. ninety years. Yeah. 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 Um, so that's 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 all good. Um, if you would imagine one, you didn't have to worry about money or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. What's your vision for the RA trade in the future? Oh, um, I'd I'd love to I'd love to buy you know this campus mm -hmm. you know is a, is an interesting building. It was uh, Gogarty's house, so it was like a nineteenth century Tudor on this, a building on this two story three story building. With gardens, and um, then when they were developing it in, um, so the copy was born in the seventies. Then Matt Gallagher, who did that for us, passed away, mm -hmm. and it wasn't until the eighties the last push to, to get it functioning. Yes. But within that function, we set we, <coughs> we sold off one of our buildings here, mm -hmm. and um, and it was initially scheduled for for a school and for the keepers quarters the people would live on premises but like that's that's just that's on our site and it's in, it's it's belonged to a private company it's just there just throwing the corner there yes and i'd love to buy that back because we could get more studios and we could yeah. extend the school and um and i really think that like again you know it's 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 a it's, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful location mm. and um and, and, and we would love to optimize that the other thing I'd love to do, which is kind of, we've kind of bumped into some rivalry here, which I'm delighted with, is I would have loved to build RHA West. Because I think, well, I think that, you know, the West has been so important to Irish art in the 19th, 20th century. Um, I think the emphasis of its importance, you know, from the, the time the railroad got to Clifton and artists could go out there and go out to Ackham and, and paint and all that, mm -hmm. there's a real history there. And, and that, that, that sort of, that that romanticism, if you want, has has now migrated north of that again, up to North Mayo. So there's quite a lot of artists living up there. And I, I, in some way, like to you know, like like to like Dublin too is fabulous, but like it, it actually you have less profile in Dublin too than if we did build an RHA West in the west of Ireland. Yeah, you know? might get the same footfall. What? You might get the same football. No, we wouldn't get the same football. Uh, but we, but, it, but I, again, I would see it as almost being studio driven. You know, mm. in, in that kind oh, of yes. thing. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. it would be like eighty percent gallery. Yeah. You know, sorry, twenty percent gallery, eighty percent studio. Okay. It'd be, it'd be the inverse of this place. This yeah. place. It'd be about making art in that environment. You know. Okay. So that's um, really getting the, the nub of your, um, you know, your raison d'être, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Who, who are you and what are you? Yeah. Yeah. How did you define it? What's your mission? I mean, our mission, as stated in the charter, is for the betterment of the visual arts and architecture in Ireland. Mm -hmm. So they didn't use visual arts, they used like painting, yeah. they used all the, all the things, sure. for, and architecture in Ireland. Yeah. So, so it's, still that, it's still that idea that uh, of helping, of assisting artists to have a better life. I mean, I, I always think, and I don't know, I've no, I always think that like, the Act of Union was 1800, and by 20, two decades later, 
like a lot of the grandeur of this city had had migrated to to London, mm-hmm. and 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 I think that the part of the part of the impetus to 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 look for a charter and to start a manual exhibition, of course, mimicking what was going on in the Royal Academy, what was to create opportunities for artists to make a living here mm-hmm. in Ireland, mm-hmm. and I still think that that's kind of what we do is is try to create a, a an environment and a, and a society that artists can live and work in and be supported and and then also i think right from the from the inception the academy was about artists talking directly to the public like i think a lot of contemporary you know museum thinking from the 1970s on sort of espoused the priesthood of the curator Mm-hmm. Um, you know the gatekeepers, and um, but like we, I'm very conscious here. Like what we try to really do is is stand aside, and you know, should we make our shit? We do create, create our shows, but yes. but really the important thing is introducing the artists to to the public, mm-hmm. or to hit their their art to the public, yeah. and try to get a direct connection to them. I know. Yeah. One thing I hear quite a lot about is people. Putting work into the RHA every year, yeah, and never getting, yeah, never getting in, yeah, yeah. And I think the percentage is near enough to five between five and ten percent. Oh, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very tough. Yeah, yeah. What would you say to people like that? I mean, is it a question of keep going or? Well, I, I think that in, in any case, I mean, uh, what I always say to younger artists is, mm-hmm. is you know, even if you're writing, if you're writing bursaries or you're writing to get a show in for an open call in Allen Art Centre or in. The dock in Sligo or in Leitrim or wherever, like, and they're getting no's. At least three or four people have to look at your work to say no. Yeah. So in ways you you are you're building an audience, uh, 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 at one at a time. Yes. And, 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 and with with the annual exhibition, which this year had four thousand seven hundred sixty five mm. entrants through the digital thing. Yeah. But you have six artists sitting in a room. For six days, looking at everything, so your work is being seen. Yes. You may not get in now. Yeah. You may not get in ever, or you might get in fifteen years from now. I don't know, but your work is being seen. And, and think of it that way: that you, you are. And I think that's also because you see, like someone say, "Oh, that work. Oh, yeah, I saw that in somewhere else." You know? mm, yes. and, and and is that you're building, you're knitting yourself into the fabric. Mm. And you, you may not be. You know, it might be a slow path, or it could be a fast trajectory, but. But but you're knitting yourself into the fabric, and, and I think you know, the rejection slip is, is true of uh, any art form. Of course, is is something that you have to be proud of. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Fail, fail, stick, fail, it fail. stick it on your wall. Yeah, stick it on your wall. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I think we've well, yeah. got answered. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in, in terms of the arts, the overall, right? Yeah. Um, do you think the visual arts are a bit of a poor relation to? Yeah. The mu- music literature yeah. aspects that my theory about this yeah. is this one is sort of like one of colonialism, and it's the idea that we invested our national identity in the ephemeral arts because it could not be taken away. You can stop talking, you can stop playing, you can hide your writing or whatever. Yeah. But the actual idea of materiality of material, uh, having material culture, and coming from somewhere like America, you know, that was such a material culture. I want to say, you know, in ways, and I don't mean this disparagingly, but but the collecting base in America is really impressive. They're very serious about collecting. Uh, you know, it's almost like they're good shoppers. Yeah. You know, they just won't buy the first dad flavor that comes on the market. They they'll, they'll pursue one or two that they want to get their hands on them. And I you know, and um, so I, I do think the visual arts is 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 that is still culturally down the pike. Yeah. I would say that. In the Celtic Tiger, when when let's say, the, the, and there may be the, a vulgarity to the Celtic Tiger that since we've rebuilt from there, that that the, the, we're slightly a little bit more sober sides, which I think is good. Um, but but that kind of you know one side is oh my god we're going we're going to become materialistic as opposed to material. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean America is materialistic, and that's why. The art does so well there, yeah. Yes, yes. But uh, I, I think it is. I still think, and I, I do think that the, that the, I do see it as the art form of the twenty first century. I, I do think that uh, as a, and whatever we think about nation states now, or however they will manifest in 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 the coming decades, 
that in some way we, when we look back at the 21st century, it would be that idea that we got really good at things. Yes. Got really good at design, got really good at architecture, got really good at, at, at you know, at, uh, in, in the visual arts. But then you, you're here last Sunday for the opening, and God, what a collective. Yeah, yeah. what a fabulous collective. Yeah. And I do miss the old, um, we went digital on submission just before COVID. Uh, and it was, it was, I think. I thought it was because of COVID. It wasn't. We had taken the no. decision. What was happening was you were getting around 2,800 works in here over a weekend. Mm. And they had to be accepted in here, they had to be carefully stacked. And then they had to be moved twice, upstairs for a view, one viewing, down again, upstairs for a second viewing, down again, and then sorted. And it was just too much work. So it was getting dodgy for the work, getting dangerous for the work. So, you know, the RA and the RUA, I think, and the RSA, they had all gone digital. So we had decided that summer before COVID, the next show, we'd, we'd do the initial selection in a digital fashion. Yes. So that came on then in 2020. And, um, but what we still do is they from those from the digital submission they still bring in seven hundred works into the gallery, but what I miss is the the sense of community around that weekend when everyone was handing in the work was phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, it, 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 people were staying outside in the pub for hours just chatting. You know, yeah. it was this great sense of, and that's the big thing about visual arts. It's like it's made in a studio alone. Yeah. So that the outside studio time is very important. Mm -hmm. And then the weekend when we used to hand back the unselected. Again, the sort of camaraderie and the the the, the, the sort of I've the, been there, Patrick. Yeah, have you been there? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was the like, walk of shame. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really miss that sort of um I, I really miss that aspect to the idea yeah. because I think it was I think it was marvellous. But it's still there to do with the seven hundred because of the, Yeah, and the it's too really. no, it's too seven hundred works come into this building over it over two days is you, you could you mightn't see anybody oh, really? oh, yeah it's very very calm and very you know okay. safe for yes. work all of that sort of stuff yeah. but the crack that used to be out here you know was around this place for the, for the big handbags and handbags and uh but i think but still you know for like whatever last weekend there's just there was just a great sense of of up you know mm. yeah i mean it, yeah it's really good yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I mean i'm very I, I, we're, we're, we're producing a lot of graduates here when you think about the amount of our colleges we have, mm -hmm. um, I'm not too sure. Like there's there, uh, there there's huge attrition in the first five years of mm -hmm. the creative of our college. Really, you're still going to be an artist, yeah. but we are producing a lot, and um, we've got some great. Would you, would you hazard a guess how many? Well, if you think like, I don't know. There must be three fifty, four hundred a year coming out. At least, yeah. At least, yeah. When you think of you know, rather than yeah. Belfast College and. Mm. You know, you've got Sligo and you've got Limerick and you've yeah. got G -G -G MIT and you have, you know, there's very, yeah, the, you know, the whatever three colleges we have here. Yes. Um, yeah, there's quite a lot. Mm. Um, but I, I do think that the, the standards is, is pretty good here, you know, very good. Yeah. Um, and that, um, and, and, and it's hard. I mean, I say to young artists, it's hard. It's really hard to be an artist. And when you get to middle age, it's really hard to be an artist. And when you get senior, it's really hard to be an artist. And then there are trends. Yeah, there's fashions. Trends. There's fashions, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I, I often think that we're not as. Um, I do think that like so, like a, a country like the UK is extraordinarily um, uh, topical. You know, there's, there's there there are generational artists in the UK. So you know, it's like a, a new British sculpture back in the eighties, and it's like whatever um, Deacon and Kapoor and all, and then that went, and then there was the. <clears throat> the new British artists or whatever with, with Hearst and all that and then mm. they look old now that's another way and we don't, well, I don't think we have that here um, because I, I probably because we don't have we, we're not as connected with the media here so you know yeah. and in, in England's you know fashion and the media when you go back to the 60s in Carnaby Street or whatever mm. there was always a, they were always in bed with each other that's right literally yes. and, and yes. <laughs> where here we don't kind of have that so it's a longer trajectory but um, yeah, I do. I mean, one of the things I would hope for in the next twenty years is that we do have a better collecting base. You know, the, we do have people. Could, who've got, could, should that not be as much international as national? In, in that, you know, you, you say, for instance, in America, yeah, it's almost um, you know we're kind of collectors. 
you know, oh. collection media or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, which you don't get here. Yeah. I mean, should we not be encouraging our Irish artists to look outside the country? You, you, it, and is there a way of making that happen? It, it's, well, I go, I go the opposite way. Okay. It's not so much that artists aren't doing that and, and making efforts to get representation abroad. I think they are, and some of them have, have it. And um, it's more this way is the way the market works is that if we could find like two dozen wealthy people, and we have a lot of wealthy people now, we just need two dozen yeah. who would, who would, instead of going to Adams and spending 70 grand, would get on a plane and go to New York and spend 70 grand. Mm -hmm. That the market will then see the market feeds. If you, I mean, the, it's extraordinarily cynical, the market. So, so you have Chinese artists showing in all of the all of the galleries and all of the number of Chinese artists. So that's because China's wealthy, and the Chinese are buying. So they're reflecting. So remember, I remember my first time I actually saw this sort of this, this vulgar trade was mm -hmm. during Glasnost, when yeah. every New York gallery had a Soviet artist or a post-Soviet yeah. artist yeah. in their stable, because the money that was coming out was Soviet. Union. And they were buying Soviet artists in New York, and and they were selling them to them. And uh, but by the by the by the end of by the middle nineties, yeah, maybe a handful of those Soviet art continued on. Yes, people had they they moved on. The business had moved on. As someone in the art market said, "Oh, I think India is the next China," and like you think, like, "Oh my God, like that's that's what it's about." Yeah, and and I, I know a number of people who who got out of got out of, um, you know, um, having, a, being gallerists in New York because it, it's just become, it's just about, you know, shopping in ways. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Patrick, you've obviously got your finger on the pulse and you're obviously eat, drink and sleep, the yeah. art world. Yeah. Um, but what do you do for, for leisure? Uh, I, take, take your mind off I things. Walk. Yeah, well, I love walking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just a walker. Yeah, right. so I I head to the hills. Yeah, and um, and I fish. So that's my, yeah, that's my two two two. But that's that's a that's a like that's a defined sort of season you know, between April and, and the end of end of September. Mm -hmm. So then it's really then taken to the mountains. Love love getting away from things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Would you camp or? Uh, no. <laughs> so day, day hikes are fine with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have a good dinner afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because I'm, I'm really interested in what people do other than what they're what, what they do, yeah, they do all the time. Yeah. Because I remember I, I when I interviewed um, James English. Yeah. That uh, he turned out to be an avid bird watcher. Yeah, avid bird watcher. And Definitely. the people came up to me afterwards and said, I've known that guy for 30 years. I ne never, never knew that, yeah. 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 <coughs> and a good fisherman. Um, yes, he's yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, you know, a daily, I mean, I would cook from every evening. Would you? Yeah, yeah. I just love cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be too, too, too ambitious that, but the idea of going home and, and making a meal is just like a way of just Calming down after yeah. the day, you know. Yeah. And do you live in Dublin? I live up the Liberties. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. So when we came back to Dublin, lived first in Hamilton Road mm -hmm. in a rental flat, and then, um, and then you know, with all that fever around the Celtic Tiger, you know, buy something, buy something. Yes. Bought a flat up in the in the Liberties, and, and, and the Liberties is a great place. Yeah. 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 Really, it's a great place. Okay, Patrick, okay. I think that's, that's it. That's great. That's great. brilliant. Thank you I so much. Yeah, that was great. Extremely busy time. Yeah, no, it's not. Really? It's also. It was busy. Yeah. It's just. Uh, it's it like. It's. It's now. Uh, um, it's the element of exhaustion. So you should be able to unmute yourselves if one of you would like to try that. Um, Brenda, I see you've just done that. If you want to say something. Yeah. yeah hi. Um, I thought that was a fascinating um, interview. A um, couple of things that uh, Patrick touched on. I mean, it would really take a whole program, I think, to develop some of them. Um, I had the privilege of being on the program board. Um, oh, I don't know, about 2015 to 18. I was highly impressed with uh, what goes on behind the scenes in the RHA. I was extremely impressed with the uh, incredible team that he has built uh, around him. Um, and another thing that impressed me enormously was the uh, tremendous diligence with which 
Patrick himself and uh, the curator, Ruth Carroll at the time, they would make a point in going out to artist studio and meet a lot of artists and they are uh, wringing their hands. Will any of the institutions ever come and look at this work, which has taken a year or more to put together? So I think the RHA certainly has built a, a good trust with a lot of artists uh, around that issue. The other issue that I think is enormously important is, um, and I'm on the, a member of the Irish section of the Art Critics Association, and we've spoken about this, uh, at our meetings is the absolute dearth of interest in the visual arts among among the media and how little you see in terms of Irish times. I mean, uh, you give a lot, a lot of space is given to auctions and results of auctions, and it's all to do with how much how much a work costs uh, uh, got. Um, very little, and I've tried myself to get um, articles about the arts into the Irish Times, particularly, and get absolutely nowhere, not even the courtesy of an answer. Um, so the, the media's total lack of interest, and when I was doing some research on the Rusk exhibition some years ago, it's absolutely startling. Uh, the contrast between the 60s, 70s and the interests of the media um, and it, uh, every newspaper having an art critic. Um, it's just appalling now, absolutely appalling. And finally, about collectors, um, I think uh, we have a small pool of people with an interest, hopefully growing in contemporary art in this country. There's still a lot of conservatism, uh, but based possibly, in my opinion, on a lack of education uh, in the visual arts from a very young age in the schools. So it goes back to education and the sense that, oh, well, that's just for rich people or that's just for certain groups of people. It's not for me. So th there's a lot of work. There is a lot of work going on, of course, but there a lot more needs to be done, I think. And it needs to start at a much, much earlier age in this country and to take the arts intensely, seriously as uh, vital to our, our culture, our lives. Yes. So absolutely. thank you. Thank you for the interview. It was very, very nice, very worthwhile. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Brenda. And, and thank you for your thoughts there. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And what, one thing that um, Patrick mentioned to me um, was that, you know, he said, if you look up a paper, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to see reviews on, on um, books and so on. And the rest of the paper is devoted to whose concert is on and yes. where at 80 quid a pop, of course. Yes. And the yes. likes. Yes. So yes. it seems to be, you know, almost an experiential mm. uh, trend. Mm. Um, that that maybe art needs to address, mm. you know, it and maybe as well. on the editors. I've been told from one journalist, it absolutely depends on who the editor is. And yes. if the editor is mm -hmm. not interested in visual art and is only interested in popular music, et cetera, et cetera. But you yeah. will notice there still is that old chestnut. Literature gets a lot of coverage, whereas the visual arts does not. Yes. And that's still going <clears throat> on. So. Absolutely. Um, Bernadette Kiley has just put a note in here. There's good coverage of the arts in most regional news media, uh, not just the Dublin ones. Um, the Irish Examiner is a great uh, example. Um, that's interesting, yes. Great conversation, says so Stephanie. Angela, great interview. Many thanks. Lots of ideas. Uh, thank you both, Marianne. Um, Eilish says, I think we need to move on um, from the RHA being the only show in town and fair play to them for their business model. I'd love to see Emma and Hugh Lane Gallery and indeed the Arts Centre step up and create opportunities for artists to show their work. Yeah, um, Myra says, do artists need to be more business savvy? Um, and Yvonne adds, and difficult to find someone to manage the business side of things. Yeah, I'm sure that's true. And, and I mean, that has to be addressed. And we've, we've made this point before about, um, you know, artists being uh, entrepreneurs you know, so they, they need to be very all rounded in terms of running a their show. Um, now, let me see. Vanessa, blah, blah, blah. Our national identity is in the arts. Wise words, a great vision from Patrick. OK, anybody else like to make a comment? Bernadette Kiley says Patrick mentioned that the regional places get more attention than do the Dublin ones. 
people are really interested in outside of the major centres. Yeah, he was making that point, absolutely. Um, you know, he says you're lost in, in Dublin too, whereas in something over in the West, it, it'll be a major feature. Okay, guys. All right, look, we leave it there. Um, thank you all very much for being here this morning. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I think it was a very interesting and insightful um, uh, piece on, on the RHA. And um, so thank you all for, for, for participating in that. Um, do go and see the show. It is an extra, extremely, really, really good show. And they've also produced this wonderful book catalogue that goes with it. All right. And it is such a tome. It's got, I think, almost all of the works uh, in it as well and would be a collector's item in itself, I would say. So, so do pick up one of those if you can when you're there. Um, other than that, we shall see you again probably in a week or two time. I'm not quite sure which. Um, we have two more before we take a break for the summer and concentrate on the uh, film documentaries. So again, thanks for joining and see you soon. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.